few people in the Trump administration had as much access to the president than former White House press secretary Sarah Sanders. And now, months after leaving the White House, she is opening up about her experience. Here she is with CBN's chief political analyst, David Brody. Here's how, here's how I see it, Sarah. Let me know. I, everybody says, you know, what's the state of the race? And I've coined a new phrase. I call it, how is Joe doing on the basement index, the BBI, the Biden basement index? If he's, if he's in the basement a lot, then they're feeling pretty secure. If he's out campaigning, yeah. <laughs> then, then he's 10 on the, base, on the BBI scale. They hid him away and tucked him into that basement for the last several months. And as the polls started to tighten, as things start to get more serious, um, you're seeing him, like you said, do more campaign events. I think that is unquestionably because they know that the president um, is moving in and doing very well and growing in support. It's also such a huge contrast to look at the excitement and the enthusiasm for President Trump versus the lack of for Vice President Biden. I mean, there is mm -hmm. just nothing that seems to be motivating or rallying or in the Biden camp in the way that it is on the Trump campaign. I've grown up in politics. I have spent my entire adult life working in politics, and I have never seen the level of commitment and enthusiasm as there is that exists for President Trump for any other candidate. I love how he always talks about the evangelicals with the preposition the. The evangelicals, yeah. they love me. Well, can you talk to me about, uh, there's been a lot written on the other side of this, the liberals who say, oh, he's just using evangelicals as a prop. Look at what he's done. He has governed more conservatively mm -hmm. than any president in history. He's done more for the pro-life community. He's done more for religious freedom. He has empowered evangelicals and people of faith in a way that no president before him has. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, am very thankful that he has been willing to do that. And in so many cases, do that in the face of so much negativity, so many people attacking him. And I, I think that his record alone stands for where his heart lands and where it is, um, he's not perfect. Neither am I, neither are you. And that's the whole idea of Christianity is that none of us are perfect. But thankfully, because we have a savior, he wipes all that away. There, there are quite a few touching moments in the book. One of them to me was that time uh, when you walk in and you have this conversation with the president saying you're leaving of the White House. Here I was pouring my heart out. From the <laughs> second I walked in, I think he knew um, and I looked at him and I, I just started crying and I'm not, not just like tearing up, like actual crying. Yeah. And so here yeah. I am sitting there crying my eyes out to the president of the United States and he gets up and walks out of the room and I'm like, are you kidding? Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally bawling and you leave, but he quickly he rushes out of the room, comes right back and hands me a Kleenex and says, don't worry, sir, it's going to be okay. And wow. it was just a really, um, I think, special moment, at least for me, and meant a lot that, you know, he, again, he showed kind of that caring side of him that you don't always get to see um, and certainly will never hear about in most of the mainstream media. You know, you face so much criticism uh, from the media, from your liberal critics, and you, you detail a lot of it. For example, you talked about someone, you know, spitting uh, at you and, and just all the derogatory stuff. I think the biggest thing is that it was so surprising that nothing was off limits, nothing was out of bounds for the people who didn't like the president. Um, and you know, their whole mantra is all about tolerance as long as you agree with them. And because I didn't agree with them on policy and I was a supporter and a very vocal supporter of the president, I was fair game and everything about me was fair game. Everything from my appearance, my weight, my makeup, my fitness to be a parent. To attack me so personally was, was certainly challenging. And one of the reasons I'm so thankful that I have such a deep faith, because if I didn't, I don't know that I would have been able to do that for as long as I was. I wasn't looking for anybody else to define me. I knew who I was. I knew that God had created me for a purpose. And that gave me the confidence I needed to go in and face every day. The Jesus Calling devotional, how important was that as you, as you maneuvered? You, you referenced the Jesus Calling devotional quite a bit, actually. 
Um, you know, it's interesting. It's still something I read every day, in part, particularly that very first briefing um, where I just couldn't seem to quite settle my nerves. Um, mm -hmm. I knew that there was a lot on the line for this briefing, and I really felt um, I needed to deliver in this moment, but I, there was just so much coming at me, and I just needed to settle my mind. And I said, you know what, I'm just gonna take a second. Somebody had left a leather bound copy of it um, in the office. I grabbed it, I went into the other room and I read it and immediately, I just was kind of like, I'm at peace. This is either, it's gonna, I'm either gonna be great or I'm gonna be terrible, but I'm as ready <laughs> as I'm gonna be. And I felt calm and just ready to go in. And so um, from that day forward, it became the very last thing I did before I went in uh, to the briefing. And even now I have it on my phone and mm -hmm. if I'm getting ready to give a speech or an interview, I'll look down um, and do a, a last little read through mm -hmm. um, before some of those big moments, just to kind of center myself and remind me what's important and why I'm there.